everyone. So today I am super excited because I'm finally going to set up my seed starting area. Now, I actually don't have a ton of experience starting seeds inside. This is actually only going to be my third year. So let's rewind a bit. I first started seeds inside back in 2019. Uh, we were renting a place at the time, so we didn't live here. But what was fantastic about the place that we were living in was it had giant south facing windows and I started my seeds right in front of those windows everything went perfectly fine I'll see if I can find a photo of it but there was just so much natural light that the seedlings really loved it and I never felt like I needed um, some other source of light to start my seeds then we moved in 2020 the end of May so I didn't start any seeds that year because we'd have to have started them one place and then move them to the other place and that just seemed like way too much of a hassle. So that year for my garden, it was much smaller and I think I just bought everything um, as little starter plants from the garden center. 2021, last year, I again started seeds inside. I started a few more than I had in 2019 and I also used the light from the windows. Now here we have west facing, west facing windows and east facing windows. So essentially what I did is I would put the seeds out, they'd start on the east side in the morning, halfway through the day when the sun was no longer shining through the windows, I would pick them up and just walk them to the windows on the other side of the house. And then at night I would bring them back so that they would start back in the morning on the east side. And pretty much I feel like that went okay. Um, I had some seeds that were a little bit leggy, some seedlings, but I think part of that was I'd also tried to use my grow, my Soltec grow light, which I have, which works great for providing light to my established plants. But I just think with the seedlings, the way the light emits, they were all trying to grow towards the center light. Um, and that caused some of them to be leggy as well. So I shifted everything over to the windows. So I think if I was just going to do windows for light again, that they would be fine but I wanna see if I can make things a little easier for myself. So the first thing that I'm doing differently this year is actually using some grow lights. Now, technically these aren't labeled as grow lights, so I'll go over specifically what I got in a little bit, but because I have absolutely no experience with this so far, and I didn't want to invest in something very large, like a giant grow rack for like five or $600, because one, I start my seeds like in our little living area, so I don't want it to become too overcrowded with seed starting equipment that I'm only gonna use for a few months every year. Also, I don't start that many seeds because I don't have a ton of room to garden in, although I have way too many seeds, some more than I can plant, so we'll see what happens then. But it's not like I'm starting, you know, hundreds of rows of seeds. So I don't feel like I need something huge, something expensive. So I'm kind of just seeing what I can get away with for the lowest cost and if it works. And then if something, you know, further down the line, maybe I'll get like a smaller actual grow light setup that's a bit more um, expensive and invest in that. But I want to see how I feel about this before I spend a lot of money. So what I was reading online from other gardeners is... If you're looking for grow lights, basically look for either like workshop or studio lights because they're essentially the same thing as grow lights. They're just labeled differently. So one's specifically labeled as grow lights, but they provide basically the same thing. Um, and they'll be cheaper if they're not labeled as grow lights. So what I did is these are actually from Walmart. I got two of these. They are the Maxima two feet LED linkable shop lights. And when I was looking at these, I ordered these online and I did a comparison of what I could find as the same size, so two foot long, cheapest grow light and compare the different specs of each. And I'll pop that up on the screen and put together a little table, but I also have it on my phone here. And essentially, so first off the price difference, these lights that I got were $29.99, which they were uh, there were cheaper options, but they were all sold out. So there were some options that were like between 10 to $20 that were still very similar. So I could have spent less if they weren't sold out. Um, so these were $29.99. The cheapest grow light that was two feet long was $46.97. So about $20, a little bit less than $20 more expensive. The temperature was different between the two I was looking at. Again, I wanted to compare the cheapest grow light. So the temperature on these that I have is 5,000 K and then 3,300K on the grow light. 
Again, starting off, that really didn't mean much to me, but I found an article that was really helpful from Johnny Seed about guide to choosing a grow light. And I'll link that below in case you are new and want to check that out as well, new to using grow lights for your seedlings. But basically it said that uh, when it comes to the temperature, you want to look for something in the 5,000 to 7,000 range, which is what the lights I got are. So 5,000 to 7,000 Kelvin. These are 5,000 to promote the vegetative growth. So I think that'll work well. And then something that's between that 35 to 4,500 is more for fruiting and flowering. So the other one I was looking at, the 4697, that was 3,300 Kelvin. Lumens is also different between these two. Again, I don't really know exactly what that means, but 2,500 for this one, 1,200 for the grow light. Length was the same two feet, number of bulbs were the same two. So again, there is some difference between the temperature, depending on what you want, some difference between the lumens, but essentially you can find different shop lights that have the different variables that you want. And it does seem like it'll be cheaper to get something that's classified as a shop light than something that's classified as a grow light. Um, so yeah, that is what I'm going to uh, test out this year. I got two of these, so two two foot shop lights, and I'm gonna put them on my metal baker's rack on the same shelf. Now I think with these, I will probably be able to start two seed trays um, using the light that I have. I'm planning to start four total. I think I did three last year, but again, I don't have a ton of space, so it's not like I need to start a ton of seeds for my garden. But with that, I will now show you what I use as far as my seed starting trays. This is what I've used ever since I started. I think I got them in 2019, but they are the uh, Jiffy little seed trays. And these ones right here are specifically labeled for tomato and vegetables. Um, the pods in here are just a little bit larger. They have another tray that's the exact same size with smaller pods and there's more in there. So this one has 36 little peat pellet pods. The other one, I don't know, maybe it's 72, might be double, but they're smaller. And the reason I start everything in my tomato and vegetable ones that are larger is that it saves me from having to pop them up inside. I would like to avoid that if I can if possible, let them grow inside and then move them outside. That's also why I am restraining myself from starting my seedlings too soon because I know if I start them too soon, I'm gonna have to spend a lot of time potting them up into larger containers. So these I've used the entire time, they've worked really well. I like them just because of their ease of use Again, I don't want to have like a bunch of stuff stored in this room. So anything that makes it as simple and efficient as possible to start seeds, I will go with. Um, these, I'll show you when I actually do start my seeds next month, but these you just basically pour water in the container that expands the peat pellets. You plant your seeds in there. This clear plastic top comes off and it goes on top as a humidity dome. You leave the humidity dome on until all of the seedlings have sprouted and then you're good to go. And then at the end, when you're ready to plant them outside, you can remove the little uh, like lining of the peat pellet if you want, but you don't have to. I tested that out the last few years. Both plants grew exactly as well as the other one with the peat pellet wrap on it and without. So super simple. I really love these. And then what you can do also is save these little domes and use them to propagate plants in the winter so that we don't have to go out and buy a separate like propagation humidity dome. So those are the products that I'm using. That's really it as far as what I've had to invest for starting my seeds this year. So I got four of these seed starting trays, two of the lights. I already had the baker's rack which I've had for a number of years other products that you will probably need, so some sort of fan just to blow on your seedlings to make sure they're getting good air circulation, makes them stronger. I just use an old fan that we've had lying around, um, one that does rotate a little bit as well so it's not just constantly hitting at the same spot on the seeds. I don't use heating mats. Um, I've never had an issue with that. What I do do is when the humidity dome is still on the seedlings, I keep them in a bathroom in the center of the house because that tends to be the warmest room. And I haven't had any issues with the seeds starting. So haven't invested in heat mats. Um, I am gonna try to use a timer since I'm using lights this time. And we have a plug that has a timer on it that we actually used for our Christmas tree. So everything else I pretty much had, I'm just kind of pulling pieces together from around the house 
and making sure to start my seeds that way. So yeah, it seems like it should be a pretty simple process. I'm hoping everything goes well. The only thing I'm kind of interested in seeing is how far away from the lights I need to start my seeds. Usually you wanna do a couple inches, but I'm gonna to try to play around and see um, how close they need to be over time. And I need to figure out a way to kind of lift the light to get it further away from the seeds, but that'll come later. But let me go ahead and I'll show you the process of getting these lights set up onto my baker circle. So here's the light out of the box. The other light is in that box. Um, there's just a chain that you can pull it on and off, but I, like I said, I'm gonna hook it up to an automatic timer. They also plug into each other, so I'll just have to deal with one plug in the automatic timer. Um, but that's the light, and now let me show you the pieces that came with it. So over here is the equipment that came with the light in order to hang it up. So the two chains, which I am going to be using, go on either end of the light. Um, the S-hooks connect the chain to the light, and then all of these I will not have to use because I'm not drilling it into the ceiling. I am gonna hang it onto the rack in some sort of fashion that I haven't tested out yet, but I'm hoping it works. Um, now let me take you over to the rack itself. So this is the little living area, and then this is the rack that I'm gonna use. Like I said, I've had this for a number of years. I've, I think I've always used it for plants, um, but this is now going to be where I start my seeds. I think I'm gonna hang the lights right underneath this top shelf. I have some remaining dried hydrangeas in there. Um, so then I'll put my trays on this shelf that I'm starting with the lights. And then the other two trays, I'm gonna start, I think just in the sun and compare the difference between the two. So let's go ahead and attempt to get these lights hanging on this shelf. So my initial plan was to get one of the lights set up figure out how I was gonna do that, and then walk you through how I was setting up the second light. But I thought it would be more fun to kind of watch me flail around and attempt to do it first and see if I make any mistakes along the way. So I'm gonna grab the first light, I will show you what I'm thinking, and then we will attempt to actually get it onto the shelf. Okay, first things first, I have the light laying here on the rack. Um, the plug is over there, so I know that the cord I want on this side when I hang it up. So I have to get the chains on it first, and then I think I'm gonna use zip ties to actually hang it from the top. Now what I need to do here is these little S hooks will fall off if I just leave them as is, so you have to use a pair of pliers and just clamp it together, which I've already clamped the S hook to the chain, so now I'm basically clamping the uh, S-hook to the light itself to make sure everything is secure. I think that's good. Other side here. So the S-hook just goes under the side, up right there, and then clamp the whole thing together. And that should be secure on that side. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side and then we will get it hung. Something else I just wanted to mention. So this rack right here is actually three feet long. So ideally I was looking for lights that were also three feet long, but I could only find two or four. So I thought it'd be better to go shorter and have it all fit on the rack than longer and not be able to hang it on the rack at all. Something else that I was considering is taking the chains and actually looping the chain over the bar first and then clamping the S-hook down on the other side, but I was afraid if I did that, I wouldn't be able to unclamp it, and these lights would be stuck on here, and if I ever wanted to move them, it would be a pain not to, or pain to be able to. So I've decided chains on the light, zip tie up here, and we'll see if that works. realized my first mistake. Uh, the cord 
on the light is on that end, but the plug to connect them is on this end. So since I have the cord facing that way to go into the plug, I need to actually reverse this around. So probably should have checked that before I got one zip tie in, but I'm just gonna cut this, swap it, and then we should be good. So is this the most beautifully and professionally constructed thing you've ever seen? I'm gonna guess no, but I think it's gonna work. So that's all that really matters. Um, right now I put one of the trays in and it is just about two inches above where the seedlings would be starting. So I think this would be a good starting height. My plan then to move them up higher will basically be cut these zip ties that I have right here. And then I will like pull the chain up like this and maybe just zip tie through like lower ones or lower ones down to the light, closer to the light, zip tie through there, zip tie around the bar, and then that will raise them up higher. Um, I know they have ones that like you can move up yourself, but again, I'm kind of just going for very basic setup here. And then if I like it, we will invest in something that is a bit more professional <laughs> of a setup. And just to give you an idea of what I did last year with the seedlings and what I'm gonna do for the ones I'm testing in the sun is I just laid them on the ground here in the morning and then I picked them up and carried them right in here for the afternoon. So that is everything I'm using to start my seeds. I know it seems so basic, especially in comparison to other gardeners that I follow, but it works for me. I don't really need an elaborate setup. I might get more elaborate in the future, um, but I'm just trying to see what works, what I like before I invest a lot into it. Um, so I think I mentioned I'm going to start two underneath the lights, two in the sunlight, and see if I notice a difference. And if I notice a difference right away that the grow lights are working a lot better, which I assume would be the difference if I see any, um, then I will order a couple more grow lights. But I didn't want to order like four or eight grow lights without even knowing kind of how they're going to work out. So we'll see how it goes. I will, of course, keep you updated. It's still going to be a little bit before I start my seeds. I mean, you can see there's still snow outside on the ground. It's the end of February. I think my earliest seeds are like mid to end of March. So it's still a little bit of time. I might try to start some morning glories inside because I kind of went down an internet rabbit hole about that. Um, we'll see how it goes. Also, if you've ever grown morning glories, this is my first year. I'm kind of getting nervous because everyone says that they can be quite overwhelming. I'm hoping in a container garden I can keep them more contained from spreading everywhere. But if you have any experience with morning glories, whether in a regular garden or a container garden, definitely let me know because I'm excited to try them out. But it might be one of those things that I try this year and never try again. So. That's unrelated, but thank you so much for watching today. Let me know if you have any tips for starting with grow lights or how you start your seeds. Um, if you do just use the sun from your windows, like I said, that's worked really well the last two years that I've started seeds. So we'll see how it goes this year. I'm always excited to try new things and see what works and what doesn't. Um, but thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.